All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, talking to an individual who's got a big fight coming up on September 7th, a bantamweight tilt that goes at Bellator 226, Isaiah Roca taking on Cass Bell, and I've got Cass on the show. How's your day going so far there, Cass? Uh, it's going great. We're just driving down to San Jose right now, just a little couple days early, get settled in. Is that something you tend to do with your fights, like get to the location like a little bit out, kind of like acclimate, settle yourself in and all that? Yeah, just to go down there and stuff. They want us down there early anyways, Bellator does, and then uh, we just go down like a day extra, a day before just because we're so far away. You know, San Jose is like a six, seven hour drive. Yeah, and I have to wonder where you're at, you know, mentally and emotionally, because it seems like you're in a good place ahead of this fight here, you know, signing like a multi-fight contract with Bellator, seems like you're, you know, developing your fan base within the promotion and everything like that, and, you know, doing well so far in uh, your run with the promotion, so what are your thoughts on, you know, where you're at and just like how things have developed with Bellator MMA? Uh, right now, I mean, I feel great, I mean, it's just another day, um, I've been, you know, fighting for so long now, so I'm just used to it. I'm just, you know, just relaxed and just um, just focusing on the weight cut right now. Um, but it's been great with Bellator. I mean, they've been awesome. I'm glad, you know, I signed with them. Um, now with that multi-fight contract, you know, is, is amazing, especially coming out of Humboldt County, you know, super far away from a small, small town. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's exciting. Yeah, it must be cool to see yourself on certain things like, you know, DAZN's biggest hits and stuff like that. Like, it seems like you're, you know, really making some big impressions in Bellator and all that. Oh, yeah, no, it's it's awesome. I never really thought, you know, like, it'd be this quickly. Like, I, I thought, like, maybe, you know, uh, like, six fights down the road or something like that. But uh, I think I made it, what, was that my third? No, it was my, my last fight. Yeah, my third fight was uh, I made it on DAZN the... Uh, Oh, was it the knockouts, the top knockouts or something on the zone? Which was awesome, amazing, like I was the top six or something. So that was cool. I never even thought that. I remember watching the video, the top ten, and going down. I'm like, oh, cool, that's awesome. I'm like, hopefully one day I'll make it on there. And then all of a sudden I was like the six, six one. I was like, oh, sweet. Yeah, it seems like there's something about that SAP center for you there in San Jose. It seems like you've got a lot of success there. Are you one of those guys who, like, attributes that to, like, you know, some level of, like, uh, like something that can, like, translate itself into fights? Like, is it something that gives you any sense of confidence, or is it kind of just, like, each fight is it's altogether a separate thing? It's like, ah, oh, the venue doesn't really matter so much. Um, I mean, yes and no. I mean, obviously it gets easier fighting, you know, at the SAP center in San Jose. Because, um, I mean, I've done it, you know multiple times now so it's been it's like I already know the get down I already know you know what we're doing I already know the drive um, I already you know we, we bring certain things to the the hotel to train with and everything so it's I mean it's pretty it's pretty easy and relaxing um, I mean I've done it so many times now um, but it definitely does make it a lot easier um, I have fought you know all over the place on the west coast and uh, and so I mean I'm definitely used to that, but you know being able to fight last it's been three times now I fought at San Jose. This is gonna be my fourth time, uh, you know, fighting for Bellator in San Jose. So I mean, but yeah, it just makes it you know super easy. Just uh, you know, just to, I already know what's gonna happen. You know, I already know the walk down the hall. You know, walking down the hall, the fast pace it is, the crowd and everything, and how big it is. Um, one thing was cool is uh, uh, my my uh, team and I. Um, Institute of Combat, we went down, like, we knew we were fighting for, like, a year, what was it, a couple months, six months, um, before well, we signed for Belter. Like, uh, my coach John Thompson's in the in the car, too, and also Tyson Miller, too. Um, and then we have a couple of the corner, corner men with us, too. But, uh, we, uh, but, yeah, I mean, it just makes it, it makes it, uh, just makes it easy fight, you know, fighting, I already know what's going to happen, how it's all going to go down. So it's nice and relaxing. You don't have to stress about it, like, oh, where are we going? What are we doing this? Where do we have to go? It's already, you know, we already have it all planned out. Yeah, for sure. And you mentioned having that great team behind you and everything like that, like John Thompson and all that. It seems like he's a guy who will very much like, you know, focus on some of the good things you've done in your performance, but also figure out like what needs to be done, like some of the things you need to work on. Like in one of your last fights, he was talking about how maybe you had a bit of a slow start, maybe gave the guy too much respect from the onset of the fight, but eventually like settled into, you know, what you want to do and really started hitting him with some shots and stuff like that. How important is it to have somebody in your corner like that who can evaluate what you're doing on a positive end of things, but also be able to 
to assess, okay, we need to, you know, work on these things as well. Yeah, it's, it's super important, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I got to where I'm at because of him, and then, uh, you know, him just being so honest, like, you know, he doesn't sh- sugarcoat anything, you know, like, when I'm doing good, he'll tell me I'm doing good, if I'm do- messing up on anything, he'll tell me, you know, hey, you're messing up on this, you gotta improve on this, you know, there's always something to improve on, and he's always, you know, the, you know, the guy to tell me, hey, you gotta do this, you know, it's, you know, fighting at such a high level now, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you're doing great, you're doing great, you know, this is awesome and stuff, but Juan's always, you know, straight to the truth, you know, he's just like, hey, you gotta keep your hands up more, or yeah, you know, you had a slow start, you need to, you know, uh, don't give him so much respect, or give him, you know, a little bit more, you know, just all depends on what I need to, you know, work on the time, um, I can always, you know, believe in him that uh, he's gonna tell me what I need to do to improve. And again, that's why, you know, coming from a small town, that's why we made it to where we're at uh, today. So it's definitely, uh, it's, it, he, his role is definitely super important. Yeah, for sure. And I'm wondering what your specific thoughts on Isaiah Roca is heading into this fight here. Is it that something where, like, you're watching tape of your opponent and kind of, like, focusing on that end of things? Or do you more so allocate that to, like, you know, like your trainers and stuff like that? And then you kind of focus on what you're going to bring to the cage more so. Uh, well, we actually do both. We definitely watch tape. I definitely watch tape. See what they're, you know, see what they're good at, see what they're bad at, see how they fight, and just, uh, and just, you know, do our homework and stuff. And uh, my coaches too. They they do the same thing, and then we come up with a game plan on, uh, you know, what we're going to do. And um, and really, I mean, yeah, we definitely, you know, do our work, our, you know, our homework on them. Um, but yeah, no, I'm feeling good with him. You know, it's gonna be a tough fight. He's a third degree black belt as a uh, as a Kempo Hawaiian Kempo. Um, so he definitely has you know dedicated his, his uh, time to the art. Um, he's been training for a long time, um, and so I think it's gonna be we we think it's gonna be a great you know great fight. Um, it's gonna be awesome to see what he brings to the table, and uh, you know what new what he's been training. You know what the new stuff he's gonna be bringing. Uh, we've been we've been you know watching all the tape and everything and then like with game planning you know we uh you know we see what he does bad at we see what he does good at and then work on it but then we also work on my skills too you know we work on a lot of things that i haven't showed you know before especially on the you know on in the bellator fight realm and then also like uh you know so we're working on stuff we kind of put on the back burner like hey we think this is going to work and so we start you know drilling it training it yeah, absolutely. And it seems like the family dynamic is pretty strong for you in a lot of these fights, too. Like, uh, I was noticing your son was rocking the, the green hair and stuff like that. So how is it to, you know, have people in your corner rallying behind you like that? I imagine the energy you get from it is indescribable. Oh, yes, it's amazing. Like, I mean, I can't, I could, I could never imagine how much support I would have, especially at this time, um, you know, that we have. I knew I had some support, but... I mean, it's it's crazy how you know how much like humble you know stands behind and everywhere else you know there are people everywhere hitting me up and sh- uh, sending love and prayers and uh, just you know you know saying they're going to be tuning in and watching like it's just cool you know I'm only three and zero now on Bellator uh, you know undefeated so far and it's still like just the beginning you know it's it's still this is still just the beginning I have you know a lot more to go a lot more to learn and just like the support is just unreal. Uh, which is which is awesome. Like uh, it definitely makes me wake up every day, um, and you know, make sure I put the time in and train harder. Yeah, yeah, and it seems like you know, pretty accomplished, you know, combat sports practitioner in their own right, and from a pretty early age already, like placing first in uh, you know folk style and third in Greco there in the older division. So I mean, they could be uh, on that path at a later point. Is that something that you would be interested in? Like, has your son indicated any interest in you know kind of doing what his dad does? Is that something you'd be like hesitant to like see him do or anything like that? Like, where would you stand on all of that? I guess. Um. So, I mean, I definitely want him to do what he loves, you know, and he definitely wants to. He definitely wants to do MMA. My daughter, actually, Taylor, too, she also wants to do it. But, like, my thoughts on that right now is that they're just so young, and, you know, I want to protect the brain. I want to keep them as healthy as possible. And so my thing is, you know, I let them wrestle. I let them do whatever sports they want. But, like, the MMA thing, like, I'll teach them, you know, some self-defense stuff. I'll teach them some, you know, a little bit of MMA, but... I don't really let them go, like, live sparring or anything like that. I will let them decide when they're 18, you know, if that's really what they want to do. Um, and I'll definitely help them on the way. 
you know, to their, you know, with their choices. And I definitely hope they stay with wrestling because right now they're killing it. You know, my daughter is a national champ. Uh, my son's almost there. He's a little older. And so we kind of started taking it super serious, uh, you know, later on and when he was after he started wrestling a little bit. But he's so close, you know, for, you know, getting the strap for that. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, the, the kids talk about it all the time. They want to they wanna do it. They want to fight. Uh, you know, they want to do the mixed martial arts. And I teach them some stuff, but uh, I'm still trying to keep them away from it a little bit. Um, I also believe in you can't give, you know, anybody the whole piece of pie. You got to give them slices. You know, they'll keep eating slices. If you give them the whole piece of pie, they're, you know, they get bored. So um, I always try switching it up on them, too. Like, we'll do wrestling, and then if I see them getting bored, we'll do, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or kickboxing or, or you know, whatever it is that they want to do. Or, or they'll do uh, gymnastics, or they'll do soccer or baseball or anything like that. Um, it's funny, though. My kids been, you know, they've been wrestling since they were four, three, and competing since they were four. And, um, and so they really love the individual sports. Like, they've done baseball and stuff and basketball, but it's nothing like, the, you know, right now with them is, you know, like the wrestling and stuff. Like, they just love it. I can't keep them off the mat. So I'm super excited. But I'm also, you know, uh, there will be a time, I believe, when they're, you know, they're going to make up their own mind, you know, their mind and be like, I want to do this. And so I'm going to, you know, back them for it. But I really hope they stay with wrestling right now because that's what they're, you know, they're, they're killing. And I, and I know I can help them. I can, you know, help them push them as far, uh, as, you know, as far as they want to go. Yeah, man, it's a cool dynamic to see for sure. But also a cool dynamic is the fact that there's going to be another Institute of Combat fighter on the card. There's going to be someone else who's representing Humboldt County. I noticed Tyson Miller is on the card as well, making his pro debut. How cool is it to have like another compatriot from the area you represent, you know, coming out with you on this card as well? Does it like galvanize your performance even more? Just adding the fact that like somebody from like, you know, the same place you're training is going to be on the card and all that or... Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, it's just, it's just awesome that, you know, like I said, because we come from a small town, so, you know, uh, John and I had to, uh, you know, work super, super hard for where we got, you know, to even make it, to even be talk, you know, be able to talk to, you know, to even get talked about Bellator, you know, uh, you know, having a fight for him. And so having somebody else on the, on the you know, on the team, Tyson, is just like, it's, a, it's just awesome that we, you know, like our dreams, you know, our dreams are coming true with like what we wanted. Or, you know what we wanted you know with this this thing and uh and i mean it's it's just cool like uh tyson's been you know we knew him when he was younger he was training with us when he was in high school and then he went away for college and uh and then he came back and started training again and then he's just been putting in the time and um and then he you know he got the call which is which is cool you know we were talking to coker um and the bellator staff and, uh, you know, telling them, you know, we have some good, you know, up-and-coming fighters, you know, that uh, that would be, you know, a huge part of the the uh, promotion, you know, would be good, especially in Humboldt County. Like, like you can see with all the love, like, we have so much support. Um, everybody, you know, is, uh, you know, stands behind us. So it's just, it's just awesome just to have somebody else on the team and, or, you know, somebody else fighting for Bellator from their same county and then not only from the same county but on the same team. Which is cool, you know. I did not see that coming for a while, and now you know it's happening. So it's just, uh, it's just cool that our, uh, you know, my coach John and myself's hard work is finally, you know, paying off. Yeah, it seems like there's quite a few uh, cool things in the works too, though. Like I'm noticing combat on the coast is going to be that first event there going October 12th. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because I think that's going to do a lot of good for some like local amateur fighters and like some kickboxers and things like that. Yeah, no, it's that's going to be amazing. So that's uh. Again, my coach, John Thompson, he's a promoter, the head guy for it, and uh, he could probably give you uh, more, you know, more info than I can, um, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's amazing, you know, we're, we're opening it up so there could be more local fighters, you know, can start training, you know, can start fighting, showing us their talent, and then, you know, with the show, it's like, hey, if we see some good guys, we'll give, you know, Bellator a call, to, uh, Scott Coker a call, and say, hey, we have these guys, either they're amateurs or eventually we're going to have pro cards. And, uh, you know, so it's going to be, it's going to get more, uh, like door, to, door, more doors to open for the local talent around here, you know, around in Humboldt County and even other places, you know, people are going to travel to us to fight for us and stuff. And if we see something that we like and we think Bellator is going to, you know, it would be good for Bellator or, or whatever other big promotions, 
uh, we'll definitely throw their names in there, you know, and, and you know, give them, give the other kids some chances that, you know, that we had a, you know, like it took us a long time to get there because, again, we we're from a small little area, you know, nobody, you know, really knows about us. And, uh, you know, we had to fight a lot of guys, a lot of good guys, just to get my name thrown in the, you know, thrown in the mix to be like, oh, who, who is this kid? And uh, so, yeah, so with the promotion, uh, Combat on Coast, I mean, it's just awesome that we're able to do something, especially in the county, turn it, uh, you know, turn around and just like, uh, you know, give back, especially all the fighters that are, you know, coming out of Humboldt County and wherever else they're traveling from. Um, Juan, you want to say anything? Yeah, no, we're just, uh, you know, doing this to provide a, a, you know, a good, a good platform for for people to to build some careers, you know, and to showcase and just like you said, it just to give. Uh, Give people maybe the uh, the uh, the audience or the recognition that uh, they normally wouldn't have. So um, it's just you know one of those things we just want to give back and try to help build some more careers. And what's awesome too is uh, so I started fighting out at Cherry Heights Casino. So in Trinidad, um, that's actually where my first fights uh, you know happen. So it's cool to actually you know start from there and then. You know, a couple years later, six years later, come back and actually, you know, and uh, now start, you know, help run the promotion and start, like, you know, building it. Like, I remember my first fight there. Um, it was a tough man competition, so I'd fight, you know, a couple times in a night. And uh, and then just, you know, um, having one there coaching and stuff. And then actually now, you know, now we're actually running, you know, a, a, you know, a legit, you know, fighting promotion. So it's. Uh, it's just it's just cool how it's all you know like how it's all coming around yeah for sure and it seems like you very much appreciate like you know supporters and stuff like that and like being able to like lend that kind of platform to certain people and stuff like that like i was seeing that some of the you know fans who'd been to some oh sorry Oh, no, it's okay. I was just going to say that it seems like you have, like, a good camaraderie with certain people in that regard. Like, I was also noticing after, you know, one of your fights there a little while ago that you were interacting with some fans and, you know, he got to cheers you with the beer and everything like that. And it seems like you're, you know, pretty good with, like, the guys in the Bellator MMA News Facebook group and stuff like that. So how cool is it to have that sort of, you know, support on that level and get to interact with people like that? I mean, it's awesome because, I mean, like, in those groups, there's people from everywhere around the world. So... Um, you know, like, everywhere, so I'm just talking, you know, people, you know, comment or whatever, I reply back to them, I make sure to reply back to them, and then, uh, you know, build, like, a little relationship with them and talk to them all, and, uh, you know, and, uh, just, you know, they're showing me love, so I might, you know, I gotta show them love back, and, uh, you know, they're, I mean, such great supporters, um, like, it, it's just, it's just, like I always say, it's just amazing that, uh, like, all the... Oh, like, the support that I get. Like, I never really thought about it. Like, you know, like, being from a small town, like, it was just, like, it was just dreams, you know, from where we're at. Now we're actually living it, which is cool. And, again, it's still just the beginning, you know. So we have year, you know, a lot more years in this. And then even out of the fight game, we should have a lot more, you know, years into it, too. You know, coaching, bringing more fighters out of the area, you know, from where we're from, Humboldt County, and then, uh, you know, just get you know, taking them all the next step. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, just kind of wrapping things up here. I always ask like different fighters I talk to, like some go-to music they listen to while training. I imagine Highway 101, the carpool is something you're listening to a bit, but like what else are you listening to when you're training? Uh, I definitely listen to the bell. That's also from Highway. Um, that's like my walkout song, but unfortunately they have not played it yet. On uh, on Bellator on my walkout every time right before I'm walking out I'm waiting for it you know to to get pumped up and get in the zone and then they don't play it every you know three times now they haven't played it I'm hoping this fourth time it will work um, but so yeah so the Bell from Highway is awesome that's like definitely one of my favorites and then he actually made that song just for me for my walkout song so it's all custom and then I mean shoot I listen to um, I listen to everything that's good. I listen to rap. I listen to even some country. I listen to some classical music. I just listen to everything that gets me in the zone. Um, that just you know, whatever has a good beat, I'm listening to. Um, our buddy Tommy, he has a uh, he's a he he's starting out in the music career too, and I can't remember the name of his song off the top of my uh, top of my uh, tongue right now. But uh, um, I mean, 
you know, we listen to a lot of local artists and, uh, and you know, just whatever has a good beat just gets us in the zone. Yeah, they got to be playing that entrance song for the next fight. Hopefully we can sort that out there. But is there anything else you want to add as a parting thought as we're wrapping things up here, Cass? Um, I pretty much, I mean, I hope everybody can tune in. You know, it's going to be September uh, September 7th this weekend, this Saturday. It's going to be a, a great fight. Uh, myself is fighting Isaiah. Uh, we both have an undefeated record. Uh, he has even lost his amateur. So, you know, somebody, though, has to go. So it's, it, that's going to be awesome. And then, again, my teammate Tyson Miller, he's, he's also fighting. He's doing his pro debut, fighting a tough uh, tough opponent, um, fighting a giant who's 6'4", um, and uh, Tyson's 5'10". And so, I mean, it's going to be a great fight, great fight night. Um, we have the Grand Prix going on. Um, I mean, shoot, I mean, pretty much is why everybody tuning in. Um, tune in to watch. I'll be fighting. We'll be fighting between 4.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Um, so, you know, tune in between then. And then the main card starts at 7. Um, and then, I mean, shoot, besides that, I got, you know, thank my gym, Institute of Combat, my strength and conditioning uh, gym, 21 Grams Gym, my coaches, John Thompson, um, um, assistant coach Levi Cope. He's been with us for a while. I got to thank my nutritionist, Darla Lewis. She's been amazing. She's been cooking me all my food, keeping me on point. She's actually driving up with us now. I got to thank uh, Gabriel Smith. He does all our photographer or t- photographer and stuff, and he uh, keeps us, you know, on our toes with his fast hands, and you'll be seeing him eventually too. And just like everybody else, all the humble, everybody, San Jose, everybody that's, you know, showed the support, you know, I just got to say thanks. Like, uh, you know, I, I do a lot of it, you know, for everybody, you know, for the support and everybody. Um, I mean, and also I got to say a uh, big thanks to my, shout out to my family, uh, my lady Chelsea. She's been amazing. She's been with me for, I think it's going to be our 14th year now uh, being together. And then also my, you know, two amazing kids. They're actually going to be there. And I'm not going to spoil it for everybody, but hopefully everybody can tune in. Friday is uh, official weigh-ins. And um, at 5 p.m., I believe it starts. And I have a, a hopefully, if it all works out, I have a uh, like a big surprise. It's going to be happening on stage. So hopefully, everybody can tune in and see, uh, you know, see what we have planned. Um, it's going it's to be cool. It's going to be fun. And uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, I can't wait to cut weight. We're you know getting down here today. We're going to jump jump in the sauna, do the weight cut. So just on my weight cut down and guys say thanks to everybody that's been supporting yeah sounds like you've got a lot of great stuff coming up people should definitely you know check out the weigh-ins for that surprise but people should check out the fight itself going on september the 7th the preliminary bantamweight bout bellator 226 isaiah roca taking on Cass bell and again just really appreciate all the time there Cass. and you know best of luck with the rest of your preparations and enjoy the rest of your day too heck yeah thank you for having me uh, dylan this is uh it was amazing it was awesome